Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm gonna follow suit like Diane did. And my history is I've been in, um, I moved here from Bozeman where I went to college at Montana State. I have a degree in microbiology and I've been in environmental public health for 28 years now. I spent the first seven years of my career, I moved from Bozeman here and spent the first seven years of my career with Glenn Douglas. And then I went to work for WSBA's food safety program for 12 years. And I've been back here now for the last nine. So I'm gonna give you an overview of environmental health department today. Go ahead. And what we're gonna discuss is the five programs that we work in, in environmental health, food safety program, on-site land use and drinking water programs, solid waste program, water recreation facilities program, and school program. Um, some acronyms and terminology, WAC is Washington Administrative Code, uh, OSS is on-site sewage system, FE is for food establishments, FBI is foodborne <laughs> illness, WRF is water recreation facility, DIFDO is donated food distribution organizations. And also just to make everybody aware, and actually I'm gonna back up a second, piggyback off what Luke had talked about initially. In environmental health, what we do is it's all law driven. Our programs are required by law. And so of course the law is the, is the RCW, the revised code of Washington. And then when those laws are, uh, any law is placed, then they um, put into effect, then they develop WACs or the Washington Administrative Code, which is the regulations that come down from those laws. And so all of what we do in environmental health is based off law and then WAC and the required programs that, that this agency uh, is charged with doing. We also though locally have our own Schland Douglas Health District Code. And what that code is actually, the entire code is based around environmental health. Um, it doesn't affect any other programs. So I just wanted to point out to you guys that in addition to the WACs that we enforce, we also have our local health code. Uh, department org chart. We have in the onsite program, Scott Reynolds, Arnica Briotti, Allison Reagan. We have a vacant position, which we have made an offer to, waiting to hear back. Karina Castro is our program assistant. Solid waste, solid and hazardous waste programs are Brian Dickey and Javier Ramos. In the food safety program, we have Amelia Gutzweiler, Erica Bettencourt, Lisa O'Daffer. And then our newest hire, Susie Howard in the school program, she was hired with foundational public health money. So we'll start today with the food safety program. And this program is um, governed under WAC 246-215. We inspect and permit right at about 825 food establishments annually. Some examples of these food establishments are full service restaurants, fast food restaurants, convenience stores, grocery stores, school kitchens, espresso stands, and bed and breakfast. Just to name a few. Okay. Uh, in the food safety program, both by inspection or let me rephrase that. We um, basically we run this program on risk. Inspection based on risk of the food establishment. Also, our fee, our permit fees are based on uh, our classifications are based on risk, and then the fees are based on risk as well. So, what we do for our high risk food establishments is our goal is to do two inspections there a year. And our low risk establishments, our goal is to do one a year. Now, some examples of these different types of risk establishments for high risk, uh, full service restaurants, fast food restaurants, multi-department grocery stores and school kitchens. When I say a multi-department grocery store, that's gonna be any of your big grocery stores, Fred Meyer, Albertsons, Costco, Safeway, they've got bakery, deli, produce, meat, seafood, those are multi-department grocery stores. Examples of low-risk food establishments are espresso stands, 
small grocery stores or markets with one or two departments um, and bed and breakfast. And then you can see in the table over at the right there, again, the permit type F1 through F4 is based on risk. F1 is our highest risk permit type. F2 is, is lesser in risk, but F2 and F1 are our two high risk categories. And then F3 and F4 are our low risk categories. You can see the corresponding fees over here, but one thing to point out, oh, with fees, diftos don't pay anything. They, they don't get charged for a uh, permit. But the bulk of what we do and have in the um, district is F2 and F3. So we have very few of the, the lowest risk and very few of the highest risk. How are those fees determined or established? Is that the, the board that sets those fees? That's correct. I like the, I like the official process. I like, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another big part of what we do in the food safety program is temporary food establishments, which is also governed under the same WAC 246 215. We conduct approximately 450 of those inspections a year. And um, temporary food establishments are, we're all familiar with those. Those are the ones that you see at Apple Blossom Festival, at the county fairs, different community events. Um, but it can also be, it, it doesn't have to be in conjunction with multiple food vendors or in conjunction with a community event. It may be a, a one-off individual selling hot dogs or snow cones out on the street or in a parking lot or a park. They are required to have a temporary permit as well if they're offering food to the public. And then this table is um, just like the permanent food establishments. It's based on risk. And we have a high and low risk. These, these two categories are for people that are operating maybe just a day or a couple of days. We also have what we call recurring high risk and recurring low risk permits for temporary food vendors. And what the recurring permits allow them to do is they can operate up to three times a week for six months. And really basically the, the um, where we see those recurring permits is at farmers markets. Everybody there has one of those. And it's obviously, it's, it's more cost effective for them to have a recurring permit than get one every week. And, you know, farmers markets normally operate from May all the way through October. So it fits in our 180 day allowance. Another thing that we do in the food safety program is plan and menu reviews. We require all new, uh, and I say we, it's in the code. We require all new food establishments, um, places that go through remodels, and also food establishments that have been closed for a while and reopened. They all have to go through a plan and menu review. And again, based on risk, uh, the fee is, you can see in that table there, and another part of plan and menu review that we do though, is what we call an amended plan and menu review. An amended plan and menu review is for an establishment that's already in existence and permitted, and they may go through a remodel or expand their menu. They have to go through that application process with us. Um, complaints and technical assistance. We investigate foodborne illness complaints as well as non foodborne illness complaints. Um, I think a foodborne illness complaint is pretty self explanatory. Um, we've probably all been through that. But non foodborne illness complaints, some, some examples are that are got a hair on my food. Um, we received one recently about somebody bit into a toothpick that was in their food cockroaches on the floor of the establishment, those kinds of things. We provide a lot of technical assistance to the public when it comes to how do you start a, a new restaurant? What are the applications? What's the process? And in this technical assistance, we also um, give them a lot of information from the WAC about physical facility requirements in addition to different food safety uh, regulations and processes. 
a couple of pictures of staff out in the field doing inspections. Lisa O'Daffer and Erica Bentoncourt, they are two of our newer food staff inspectors. And then on the right, somebody has taken a, a temperature of a milk product of milk, make sure it's under the proper temperature. Okay, next we'll go into on-site sewage system land use and drinking water programs. The on-site and land use is regulated under WAC 246 272A. Drinking water program is under WAC 246 291. And what the on-site program does um, in a nutshell is that we issue septic permits for septic system installations and what we do when we issue those permits is we review the application and we also verify that the system is installed properly so that when the effluent from septic systems um, comes out of the system, we make sure that it's gone through enough treatment so it doesn't pose a risk to the public. Some, uh, the major types of septic permits that we issue are new construction, existing system expansion and repairs. And um, as with all five of the programs, we investigate any complaints we get. Most common complaint we get in the on-site system or in the on-site program is surfacing sewage. Another part of what we do in the on-site program is we license service providers. We have about 130 of those, and they are required under the WAC to have an annual license. And our three categories of service providers are installers, and they install the septic systems, the pumpers who pump the septage from the septic tanks, and we also have what's called operation and maintenance service providers. And these are individuals that can um, troubleshoot a septic system, they're a resource for septic system owners, if they're having problem with their uh, septic system, these people can troubleshoot that and, and help them uh, guide their way to get the system fixed. Uh, in the land use program, primarily what we do is when somebody is developing a property, subdividing that kind of thing, what we do is we make comments to the county and to the property owner to ensure that there's water and wastewater av availability before the property is developed. And one thing I wanted to show you in, in which is part of land use, this picture here is actually from our, um, it's a requirement in our local health code. And it's a really, a, well, what it's designed for is to make all properties equitable. And what I mean by that is in our, first of all, in the WAC, a drain field has to be a hundred feet away from a well. That's in the WAC, in the on-site WAC. What we have done locally is we have required setbacks of wells to be 50 feet from the property line. And what that does is, if you can see here that the, the orange property owner puts in a well 50 feet from the property line, and then the blue property owner puts in a drain field. If they put it 50 feet from their property line, you now meet the 100 foot setback in the WAC. If we didn't have this in our local code, what would happen is people could put their well right up against the property line, which then pushes the blue property owner back another 50 feet in order to meet that 100 foot setback and they're losing that much more of their property. Um, and some of these lots are pretty small and some of the lots don't have very good soil type. So, so we're, we're you know, increasing the availability of their property to be developed for them by doing that. It makes it all of the properties more equitable. Uh, drinking water program. Uh, three main things we do in the drinking water program is we contract with Washington State Department of Health annually to do what's called sanitary surveys of small group A water system. I think this year we have 16 or 18 that we are contracting out with them to do. We conduct private well water reviews to ensure that they are sanitary 
and we review simple chlorinated group B water systems. Some of the major, um, the main types of permits and fees that we use for uh, these, these programs on site land use and drinking water. You can see on the left there, new construction, major repair, minor repair, existing system expansion. Under new construction, the two different fees there are if a, if a um, septic tank is under a thousand gallons, it's 655 for our permit. If it is over a thousand gallons and it's $928. On the land use and drinking water uh, table there, there's short plat, major plat review, private water review, new group fees, and sanitary survey. The two uh, fees for sanitary survey is, is what we contracted out again with the Department of Health. Even though what we're doing for them is small group A water systems, we have some really small group A water systems. Those we get reimbursed $400 from the Department of Health and the slightly larger ones we get uh, reimbursed $800. Okay, solid and hazardous waste programs. Solid waste is under WAC 173350 and 173351. Hazardous waste is under WAC 173303. And what we do is um, we conduct application reviews in conjunction with Washington State Department of Ecology for all solid waste facilities. We also conduct expansion reviews, um, application reviews in conjunction with Ecology for, for all solid waste facilities as well. So new and expansions. Once the application is approved, then we give you the permit to operate. We have 19 of these permitted facilities that we inspect quarterly. And these facilities include municipal waste landfill. We have, of course, the one Greater Wenatchee Regional Landfill up by the airport. Uh, we have several demolition and inert waste landfills. We have a recycling center in Chelan. Uh, we have a few closed landfills, two composting facilities three transfer stations, and one moderate risk waste facility that's located in Flag County on 97A. I think you guys are aware from my board reports that we investigate improper solid waste, solid waste handling complaints. We receive about 75 of those annually. Um, I'm going to go over to the right here. Our solid waste facility permits are based, uh, they're $91 an hour for our inspection time. That's how we bill them at permit renewal. Going back to the left of this slide, in the near future, we'll be, we will be conducting hazardous waste site visits. And what we'll be doing in those site visits is it's, they're going to be all educational visits. And we will go to businesses that use hazardous waste or hazardous chemicals and make sure they're disposing of them properly. Uh, for instance, they can't dispose of them into the storm drain. So we'll be looking at that. And also another part of what we're going to do is, um, this is a program we're working with the Department of Ecology through, and they have a number of safer alternative chemicals that we will be educating and offering to people as a, um, to switch out from the more hazardous chemicals. Some examples of these types of hazardous waste or hazardous chemical businesses are hotels, dry cleaners, auto body repair shops. And over here on the right, we have Javier Ramos in our solid waste program. He's inspecting a closed landfill. Okay, on to the water recreation facilities program, which I reported on the first time, for the first time on Monday at the board meeting. This program is regulated under WAC 246-260. We permit and inspect about 210 semi-public and public water recreation facilities annually. Some types of these facilities are public swimming pools and spas, 
hotel and motel swimming pools and spas, apartment, condo, and HOA swimming pools and spas, waiting pools, water parks, and splash pads. This program is set up similarly based on risk like the food safety program. So our goal is to inspect all of the facilities. We, we have a large amount, about half of these 210 are actually seasonal. So it's a real busy time from, they start right up around um, Memorial Day and they operate till about Labor Day. So the summer is a real busy time, but we inspect all of them annually. And then our goal with the year round ones is to inspect them twice a year, uh, similar to the high risk food establishments. And um, we investigate just like the other programs, we investigate any kind of complaints we have about this, any of these facilities, including waterborne disease outbreaks. And you can see at the table there, again, based on risk, you have your year, year long and your seasonal uh, those are two permit categories and their fees. Okay, lastly is a school program regulated under WAC 246-366. And what we have been doing locally is we've been doing really about half of the program for the last nine years. And I am the one that has done the, the half of the program for the last nine years. And what, we, what I've been doing is, again, required by the WAC, is site approval, plan approval, and pre-opening inspections for all new schools, remodeled, additions, portables brought in, that kind of thing. Um, and these are for private and public K through 12 schools. Um, again, in this program, we investigate complaints. Um, I've been to ventilation complaints, mold complaints, general safety complaints. So what we will do now as we build out our school program, which uh, this jurisdiction hasn't done for many, many years, is we will start resuming routine inspections of our 50 public and private schools. And the WAC does charge the local health jurisdiction with doing periodic routine inspections. So um, that's what our, our new hire, Susie Howard, will be doing in the school program is building this part of the pro, of course, taking over what I was doing, but then building out this part of the program as well. And what I did was highlight some of the major WAC sections that we'll be looking for in these routine inspections, uh, building maintenance and building safety, adequate supply and properly stocked can sinks, ventilation, temperature control, lighting, sound control, and general safety. Uh, school program fees are charged $91 an hour for our time, similarly to the solid waste program. It's sound control. I mean, I know what it is, but I mean, I, I, is there re regulations of decibels? Really? Exactly. Yep. And they, they can't, you know, a classroom, and I don't know what it is, um, yeah. but it can't be a louder in a classroom than X decibels. We take a sound meter with us. Go ahead. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Questions? Or, or any other questions, I should say? Go ahead. I've noticed since COVID that porta potties now have um, hand sanitizer in them and they never used to. Can you um, amplify on that? 